This is the first piece of cosplay that I ever owned. For those who don't know, it's a headband worn in the show Naruto. Unfortunately, the original has been lost in time, but the memories of wearing it to school are still fresh. At the time, I had no idea what cosplay was. I just knew that I really liked a show about 13-year-old ninjas. Using the limited amount of knowledge I had of Google and computers in general, I spent the few precious hours of computer time that I had on finding anything and everything about this show. Then, out of pure luck, I found a picture of someone dressed up as my favorite character. I couldn't get over it. The detail, the hair. How did they do that with their eye? I know I had to do this one day. I became obsessed with finding more pictures like this, more people who could do this. And I found out quickly that I wasn't alone. Not even close. Jessica Cotter. My major is in English, Creative and Professional Writing. Um, I'm a junior. I've been cosplaying for about six years. When I learned what it was actually called, I'd already been doing it for a little while. Because cosplay is basically like dressing up like the characters you love. Having lots of fun and pretending to be them. They had like small merchandise and stuff. So like the first time was when I was into a show called Naruto. And the people in that show were like these headbands. And I bought the headbands. And wore them everywhere. Like a complete loser. Now before we get into the fun stuff, let's talk about the basics. What is cosplay anyway? For most definitions, it's simply a short way of saying costume play, or dressing up as a fictional character of some sort. This can be from a cartoon, a comic, a movie, anything really, but its biggest crowd is that of the anime community. This makes pretty logical sense, seeing how both anime and cosplay originated in Japan, it would be natural for them to evolve together. While the act of dressing up as a fictional character for the sake of presenting as someone different has been documented since the times of Kabuki theater, the term cosplay itself wasn't coined until 1984 by Nobuyuki Takahashi when he attended the Los Angeles Science Fiction World Con. The idea of dressing up in character didn't get popular in the U.S. until the times of Star Trek, which had one of the largest nerd followings at the time, and it only grew from that point on, gaining popularity to the point where people who don't know about cosplay in some way are the minority. Heck, you probably cosplayed during Halloween without even realizing it. Weird, right? My name is Morgan Batley. I'm 18. I'm a graphic arts... I'm actually... I'm 19. <laughs> um, I'm a graphic arts major, and I've been cosplaying for about... Oh, gosh. Uh, five years, I would say. I, I was watching this online like cosplay group on YouTube called Parlay Productions, and I watched them kind of like do these little skits and stuff online, and I just kind of got into doing it like that way. My first cosplay is Riku from Kingdom Hearts, which I still wear to this day. He's my prize possession. <laughs> so, the person I am attempting to cosplay, at least, is named Kenma Kazumi. He's from Haikyuu, which is like a volleyball anime. And so the things that I have for him are he's on a team called Nekoma. So what I currently have for him is I have the jersey, which has Nekoma on the back, and then Nekoma volleyball on the side of the pants, which is how they look in the series. And this is the first outfit he appears in. I'm also in the process of buying his actual volleyball costume, but I do not have that with me. I have the wig of his hair. He has a weird hairstyle, which is why I need a really specialty wig. But the wig and bases looks like that. And I also have 
colored contacts on the way, but those are not here yet, and I'm scared to put those in because I've never used contacts before. Okay, so first thing you need is not a hairnet. That's a mistake you make with Halloween wigs. Hairnets don't work. In general, everyone has too much hair unless your head is shaved. So you need something called a wig cap, which actually binds most of your hair down. And they have holes in the top, so if you want, you can put them on like this. I like to do it because I don't like to force my hair into stuff. It's very difficult. And then you just evenly distribute your hair. Then you have these wigs, which if you get a good wig, it has this stuff at the bottom, these two little clamps, which are so you can change the size to your head. This one fits me pretty well, so I just kind of keep it at the regular. But if you need it tighter or looser, if you get a good wig, they can do that. Oftentimes, it seems like it's too small, and it seems like you have to like really squeeze it, but that just means it's going to stay on your head for however long you need it to. So if it's tight, it's usually pretty good. As long as you can just get your hair up in there. biggest thing is um, being judged for my costume, um, whether it's not good enough, it's not detailed. Um, I know in the cosplay community there's a big um, divide between like store-bought costumes and handmade costumes and usually the store-bought ones are kind of looked down upon because you're not putting your effort into it, you're just paying somebody to make it for you. And that's kind of why I've kind of geared more towards making most of my costumes if I can because um, it just means more to me in a sense because you get to show off like your hard work and stuff like that. So. A l huge problem in the cosplay community is consent. People think that if you're in a costume of a character they love, they like seem to forget that you're a person. So they'll run up and hug you or start touching you without asking you. That's not okay. You wouldn't do that to someone on the street. Don't do that to someone in a convention. Because, like, even if you're dressed as this character, and even if it's pretty normal for people to take pictures of you, ask first. And that extends a lot further down, whereas, like, those are kind of the day-to-day -day things you have to deal with if you're in a costume. But a lot of times, since many costumes are revealing or inappropriate, or sexy in some way, shape, or form. A lot of people, it comes down to a lot of sexual harassment happens at cons. There's had to be huge movements against it, like specifically saying costumes are not consent. Just because someone's wearing a costume doesn't mean you can hug them or take a picture of them or touch them inappropriately. There have been stories of um, cosplayers getting drugged like, people putting things in drinks and giving them to them. And lots of kind of unsafe things happening. There's even, if there's someone that's this is dangerous, that multiple times will come up and bother you and try to touch you inappropriately or try to say really inappropriate things to you, cosplayers actively alert other people to that person. I see it all the time, that if I'm in this area, I need to watch out for so, for like, this person, this person, this person. They usually dress up as this person, this person, this person. And you need to stay as far away from them as possible.